Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand, Manchester United's visit to Tottenham. Will it be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's last game in charge of Manchester United and what team will he put out? Will he stick to his guns and stay stubborn to those players he trusts? Or will he do what many think is a weak thing and try and pick a team that pleases the fans to keep himself in a job? We're going to be looking at that. We're going to be, Spurs are actually above us in the league. I didn't realise Spurs were above us. I mean, look at that, yeah. Spurs are above us in the league, says it all, but we have to win this game. We'll be looking at how Ollie might line up. We'll be looking at the ramifications. Will it be Solskjaer's last game? How United will set up? All of that to come. But first of all, let me just say a big thanks to Ultimate Fan, who are sponsoring the show today. Um, so, uh, Ultimate Fan is a fancy football with a twist. Imagine fancy football combined with super cool pack openings. The game is super simple to play. All you have to do is be over 18 and download the app to totally free using the link in the description. Uh, follow the sign up system and then you'll be able to start opening packs and filling in your team for this coming weekend. There's ultimate, also Ultimate Fan Plus for you to explore. This section features paid for gold and silver packs where you can receive extra cards, exclusive content and much, much more. Each week there are prizes available for the teams that perform the best and this week's prize is a massive 8 500 pounds so how you play this game is you download it for free you've got to be over 18 you open your packs you get your team you, you acquire points from how they perform over the weekend and then you check yourself against the leaderboard and see how you're doing this week i packed mo salah and wambasaka who are going straight into the team to help me strengthen up front and also in defense well certainly salah up front hopefully wambasaka in defense i've also added phil foden to the team as i think city are going to get the win against crystal palace this weekend and as always if you want to check out my team we've posted a pic of it on the united stand twitter at united stand mufc and if you head over there make sure to drop your screenshots of your team in the comments for us to check out and for everyone else to have a look at as well if you want to take part in this awesome week's game then hit the link in the description below and you can start playing ultimate fan today for free you must be over 18 though links in the video description thanks again to ultimate fan for supporting the united stand and now let's move on with the rest of the show i'm back on the screen and that is the team i think Oli gonna solskjaer I mean, maybe should pick in this game. I don't know what you think, but maybe he should pick that team because obviously Varane comes back. We think Varane will be back. Look, whether Varane's fit or not, he was meant to be out until at least the Man City game. He's back a week early. We've seen it time and time again with Luke Shaw, with Harry Maguire, with Marcus Rashford. I mean, remember last week, Bruno Fernandes and Fred apparently had knocks. Who knows whether they had a knock or not? They played crap. But maybe that was because they had a knock. Who knows? Maybe they're being rushed back because they're in the Oli Trust Club. I don't know. But Varane will come into this game and will he be ready for this game? Um, well, you know, it's a risk. It's a risk. Maguire still doesn't look fit. Luke Shaw doesn't look right. We know he played against, was it Villa or Everton when he hadn't trained all week? So, you know, there's a weak area at the back there. Uh, obviously, McTominay and Fred, there is no Pogba. And then I would imagine he would bring Sancho in. I, I, I absolutely think he will start Sancho. I think regardless of Van der Beek, and we'll talk about that in a minute, I think he will start Sancho because it's his £74 million signing. He's embarrassed himself enough by not using him. And I think he has to use Sancho. Of course, Marcus Rashford will start. Bruno Fernandes, Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, that's the team I think he should pick against Spurs because that is basically the team that's got him into this problem in the first place. And people would say, well, surely he should change it for that reason. But how many times this season, whether it's Villa losing at home, whether it's Everton at home, whether it's scraping wins against Villarreal or Atalanta, whether it's Leicester, whether it's Liverpool, whether it's, you know, we weren't particularly good away to Southampton and teams like that as well. The fact is, Oli has consistently, stubbornly ignored people like Jesse Lingard, Jaden Sancho, um, Donny van der Beek, Nemanja Matic and others. Stubbornly ignored them, no matter how well they've done in training, he's ignored them to stick with the players that give him trust, desire and honesty. And the players that have underperformed. So in a game where he's lucky to be in his job, why would he not go with the players that he trusts? You know? And why would you go? I mean, look, let, let, let's just do it on screen, actually. There's, there's no point in not doing it. So let's just imagine that in, in this game, he actually goes, you know what? I'm going to play for the fans. Um, you know, Bruno's out for Lingard. Um, who else can we take out that's going to make the fans happy? Oh, I know. Let's uh, let's drop. Yeah, let's drop Scott McTominay and Fred. And let's play. Let's bring the Manja Matic in as well. So, you know, this is something I'm going to show you in a minute, a back five scenario. But imagine he goes with that team. He drops Bruno, McTominay and Fred and he plays Lingard, Matic and, and, and Van der Beek. Um, and maybe he drops Luke Shaw as well. Um, you, you know, that to me, I think fans would go, ooh, that's interesting, that's refreshing. But it's not Ollie. It's not his coaching team. That, that he's picking a team to please the fans. And 
There's no future in that. And if, it, if it's a bye-bye thank you to the fans, then fine. But if this is... Imagine if we beat Spurs with that team. How long before we start sneaking McTominay and Fred back in again and Bruno back in again? You know, it's like... And Bruno should be in the team. I'm just using him as an example. But I, I just don't, it's going to be so interesting how he goes with the team on Saturday because his credibility is on the floor. Whether I say that or you say that, it, it, the media say it, whether rival fans say it, his credibility is on the floor. He's been annihilated in his last two Premier League games. I think he's, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. I, I do actually think, as much as I would love to see Matic and van der Beek, but I've, I've been saying this and you've been saying this for a very long time, as much as I would love to see it, I think he's got to go with the team that he's always gone with because that is the team that he's always gone with. And that midfield three is the midfield three that he's always said is the team. We, look, we know it's his best 11. I, 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 I suppose this is where it comes down to, isn't it? It's He's massively undermined. The team that he's stuck by is next to useless. If they go and beat Spurs, I, I just, I mean, look, I, I'm wrapping myself up in a situation here, so God knows how Ollie feels. If he goes with the team that he normally picks and it wins, people will just say it's a stay of execution and the next game he loses, everyone will be on his back again because of McTominay and Fred, etc. And, you know, his favourites. So if he wins against Spurs with the team that he always picks, no one's going to see any longevity in it. But if he changes it and brings Van der Beek and Lingard and Matic and whoever else in, everyone will go, well, he's only doing that to try and please the fans. He's not done that for the last year. So there's no future in that. It's just a weird, weird situation underlined by the fact that I hope we bloody win. But there is a third scenario. What if he goes to a back five, Mark? People are saying, what if he goes to a back five? Well, if he goes to a back five, I mean, a back five could be any combination, but look, he could put Tellez at left back. But let's imagine, let's just, let's create a back five because it's not really the individual, it's, it's the problems of the system. If he, if you like, if Luke Shaw, wan is wing backs, it could be Tellez and Delo. I, I agree. Um, Varane, Lindelof and Maguire, you could put Shaw in there, put Tellez at left back, I agree. Okay. The, we've got Matic and van der Beek there, it could be McTominay and Fred and probably would be. We've got Bruno there, yeah, it probably would be Bruno, could be Lingard, okay. And then front two, probably should be Ronaldo and Cavani. It will be Rashford and, and Ronaldo. It probably should be Martial and maybe Ronaldo. But it will be Rashford and Ronaldo because Rashford's got to start. And Oli, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer loves Rashford as much as he loves any Bruno and anybody else. If he picks a back five against Spurs, why is Conte not the manager? Like, if we go... So I, I just... I don't, I, don't, I don't feel sorry for Oli because he shouldn't be in the job. But I don't know what he can do in this game that isn't going to get criticised. Regardless of whether we win. Because, well, if he wins with his normal team, everyone will be like, well, this won't last. If he changes the team a lot, everyone will be like, well, that's weak management because he didn't do that before. And if he goes to a back five, people will go, well, there's a manager available who can do a back five a hundred times better than him. And that just brings me back to the point that this Spurs game is just really about surely treading water surely it's just about we couldn't we couldn't replace him quick enough because i don't think i mean the results what's in math the, the results what matters every united fan wants to win this game i hope and winning the game is what matters and we'll talk about how we do that in a minute but ultimately the longer term and everything's about Solskjaer at the moment the longer term is i don't i think he's just got to go with the team he always goes with and the team he always goes with is that team and maybe he does. I think he's got to pick Sancho over Greenwood. I like Greenwood, but he's going to go for Rashford, so it's got to be Sancho. So therefore, Greenwood's got to go to the bench. But he may he may as well go with that team because we know that's his best team. And it, you know, Ollie's always been a man about stubbornness, loyalty, and trust. And as, although I've never agreed with his best team, at least if he's going out, he's going out his way. And I think he's got to pick that team because if he goes and changes it, it's like uh, why why is it taken till now when you shouldn't even be here? to make changes and you've been here three years I mean look I'll ask you the question I can't give you the answer I can give you the answer but I feel I shouldn't if he goes for a back five and we win do you want him to have another year to try out a back five if he brings Donny and Matic in and Lingard and, and anybody else that you want to play in and we win do you want him to be given another three months it's like I don't I th I, I, I've checked out when it comes to Wally. There is no, there's nothing he can do that will make me think, yeah, you deserve more time because I think he's had enough time. 
Therefore, if he is going to turn this around, he's got to do it with his team because that's what he's been doing for a year. So I would expect him to go with that team because that's Oli. That's his coaches. That's Oli. And look, one thing I would say before we talk about Spurs is that, um, and I tweeted it this morning, and I, I don't know how credible it is, but somebody messaged me and said, look, the feeling is that United don't want to sack Oli because they believe that it could be another Sir Alex Ferguson situation from the late 80s where United... Um, you know, everybody, the media, fans think that he should be sacked and then the club stick by him and then they go on to greatness. Um, and look, I, I don't I don't feel guilty for being Ollie out. If if Ollie was holding up the Premier League trophy at the end of the season, I would come back and say I'm Ollie in. But that's the only way I'm coming back. Um, and everybody has to make their own choice. I never wanted to be Ollie out. I always wanted it to be successful, but when you've got one point from 12, 14 from 27, and you've just been, an, and, and also, most importantly of all, you can lose football games. You can. But when you've been annihilated because you're tactically inept and Liverpool at home, I'm Ollie out. I have to be. But I don't like the word Ollie out. I'm, I'm about standards. I want Manchester United standards to be where they should be. Um, if anybody in Manchester United Football Club is relating this to something that happened in 1989 with Sir Alex Ferguson, they're bigger incompetent people than I thought they were. Because I was only a kid in 1989, but Sir Alex Ferguson, as I've said many times, came from Scotland with a CV. He broke the Rangers-Celtic axis of domination. He won a European trophy. He won a Scottish Premier League title and was a very... I mean, of his day, he was basically Jurgen Klopp. But probably better. Like he was a he was if he was around now, everybody would want him. Everyone would be going about this manager at Aberdeen. Like he was had an amazing CV. Ollie's CV is an interim coach because they needed somebody who got relegated by Cardiff and has won a Norwegian title. Like the, straight away, there's just no comparison. Also, United could buy their way out of trouble in the late eighties. We spent a lot of money. You know whether it's Paul Ince, Neil Webb, Mike Phelan. We spent a lot of money and not other, not many other clubs could. It's different now. So we had a manager with a CV who had a plan and he also had a style of play. We, we, we were quite entertaining. I remember the opening day of the season when we smashed Wol uh, what, Wolves, um, Arsenal. Like United were an, an entertaining team and it took a lot of work. But Sir Alex Ferguson had a style of play. He had a plan. He had a CV and he had, United were in a situation where they basically could spend more money than most clubs and that was why that persistence was worth it flip it 20 however many years later uh, 30 years later and um, 32 years later and we've got a manager without a plan without a good coaching setup who hasn't got a CV and can't really buy himself out of trouble I mean, yeah, we have spent. Well, we've well. To be fair, he's tried to buy himself out of trouble and can't. So that actually, they've tried to do that, and and he can't do it. So look, the comparison with oh, I nearly fell off my chair there. The comparison with 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 Sir Alex is ridiculous, and um, ultimately, you know, what needs to happen needs to happen. Will he get the sack if he loses to Spurs? Well, let's talk about the Spurs game. I mean. I don't like doing predictions anymore because when I do predictions, they don't always go the way I think that they should do. Um, and I don't want to jinx it. I said that we would get a draw against Liverpool. We didn't. I said we'd beat Leicester. We didn't. I said we'd beat Villa. We didn't. And I said that we would beat um, Everton and we didn't. So <laughs> whatever I predict isn't going to be right. But look, let me talk about Spurs first. They've got 15 points. And the interesting thing is Spurs are talking about sacking their manager. And I don't know... I, I, they never should have given Nuno the job. Nuno is the same manager who was at Wolves. They don't score many goals. They're quite boring. And I don't think he's a good fit to, for Spurs. But they've got 15 points. Granted, they took nine from their first three. They've only taken six from their next, I, I suppose, six games. But they are in a better position than United and they have played Chelsea and they have played Man City and they have played West Ham away and they have played Arsenal. So they've actually had harder games than we have. So they're a, they're a dangerous animal Spurs. And with people like Harry Kane and Son and Lucas Moura, you know, they've got match winners there that if we're weak at the back, they will take those chances. I think that Spurs, 
I, th- I also think the away crowd is a big thing that we've not really witnessed. We seem to have been playing at home a lot recently. Obviously, we had Liverpool at home. Atalanta was at home. Um, obviously, we had the Everton and the Villa games. Leicester was away, and we saw what happened there. It was it was it was a disaster. So, I do wonder about Spurs and their home crowd. And I think walking into that, if you're one nil down or two nil down at half time, you're not attacking the Stratford end in the second half. And we've seen with United, certainly the Villarreal and the Atalanta games, they are losses if we're not at home with the Man United Old Trafford crowd roaring the, the team on and getting another two gears out of them. I think United this season have a few wins, and we only have a few wins, because of the fans. Because the pl- because of the players, but because of the fans. The fans have lifted. It's like anything, you know, if you're if you're playing table tennis down the local leisure centre or, you know, you're having a pint and everyone's going drink, 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 if you, or you're going on a run and you've got someone with you telling you to keep going. It's not rocket science that when you have got people behind you, you can find other levels. And United have had that from the Old Trafford crowd, certainly against Villarreal and Atalanta. They won't have that at Spurs. Now, that can either be a good thing or a bad thing, but how can it be a good thing? Because we've won games because of that crowd. Now, there might be that whole siege mentality, you know, as against the world, or there might be that whole, oh, my God, we've got no protection, the crowd are against us, it's in trouble. And I don't know which way it's going to go. And I don't really know what the Spurs crowd is like because they can be a little bit, you know, moody as well when things aren't going their way. So, you know, first 20 minutes is going to be key. First goal is going to be key. I wouldn't be... It's so difficult because I wouldn't be surprised if Spurs heads drop if we start well and we win it 3 or 4-0. Um, I can see that it's not the it's, it's a great result for Manchester United three or four nil, but it's also a head mess. Imagine if it's three or four nil. You're like you're celebrating the goals, you're enjoying the win, and then it's like, well, now it, Ollie's got another five games. Um, but we shouldn't be in that position. We should be able to win that game three or four nil and say, look, you know, at the end of the day, that's one win. It's only three points. If we lose to Atalanta or City, you know. He shouldn't be here anyway, but he definitely should go. And, and 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 that, again, comes down to the incompetence of the board. It's not the incompetence of the fans. The fans shouldn't be in a situation where if we win 3 or 4-0, we can't enjoy it because we're thinking, well, we've got Ollie for another six months. The board shouldn't be swayed by that, but we know they get swayed by songs that are sung and everything like that. And I certainly won't be swayed by that. And I don't think many United fans will be as well. I think we could win that game 3 or 4-0 because at some point, those players are so good individually that collectively they, they will click something's going to click at some point it has done will Ollie allow us to win three or four nil is something else and I, that's why I don't think it will be three or four nil because unless it goes a very weird way and there's a red card or Spurs are absolutely atrocious I think if we go one nil up Ollie will go Shh, hit him on the break um so maybe we can win that game two nil maybe we can win it three nil but I can't see us winning it four or five nil um Spurs if they score the first goal I think this will be a tight game is what I'm trying to say. I can see it being 1-0 either way. I could see it being a 0-0. I mean, a draw doesn't really suit anybody. We need to win. Uh, but it doesn't cause massive, massive headlines for either team. I can't predict this game. And I, I think I can't predict this game because emotionally, I'm I don't, I'm all over the place when it comes to United. I want us to win. I don't blame any of the players. But I'm massively disillusioned by the coaching and the ownership. And that's probably why I can't pin anything on this because reality is if someone says we're going to lose, I understand. If someone says we're going to win, I understand. If someone says it's going to be a draw, I understand. So it's a very, very hard game to predict. I would say that United, well, I'm not going to sit on the fence. I'm going to say 1-1 in this game. And I will be wrong. So that means either Spurs or United are going to win because I I can't predict anything at the moment. So I I will say that it's probably going to be 1-1. But I do think that, you know, we, we will quite rightly have um, our away support which I think is the best away support in the league if not in Europe and and they will be sing- I'm sure they'll be singing Ollie's at the wheel and I'm sure Spurs fans will be singing Ollie's at the wheel as well but I would expect that because it's it's a Manchester United game and our away support did that for Moyes they did it for Van Hal they did it for Mourinho so why would they change and you know we need you, you want that atmosphere You, I, I want Manchester United to win and as I said on the morning show ultimately a lot of people think we'll lose to Man City. I don't necessarily think that is the case. It's a derby. Um, all right, we got smashed by Liverpool, which is effectively a derby. So I get that. If we're going to lose to City, and Ollie's going to lose his job in the international break if we lose again anyway, very important that we beat Spurs. I don't think beating Spurs 
is going to make people go give Oli another chance. Um, I think beating Spurs and then losing to City will be probably the end of Oli. So, I mean, even if you're thinking like, I want United to lose a game so that Oli gets the sack, I don't think this is the game to lose. I think this is the game where we definitely 100% need to get three points. So in that bubble, you know, you should be behind the team and hoping the Manchester United are going to win. Um, and I think that anybody who thinks that if we lose to Spurs, you'll get sacked on Saturday night, what's changed with United? If United can't sack him after Liverpool, why would they sack him after Spurs? And people might say, well, they've had more time to, to sort it out. They're not in official talks with any manager. If you sack Oli on Saturday night, you've got to sack the coaching staff. If you sack the coaching staff, who's taking training on Monday morning? And if we're not talking to anybody, we've got a game against Atalanta midweek. I think Oli's in charge for the next three games. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous that if he lost to Spurs, he'll have taken one point from 15 and still be in a job. He could take one point from 18 and still be in a job. That's the, that's the plan that the board have, have laid out in front of the fans is that I think no matter what happens against Spurs, he'll be in charge against City. So therefore, you've got to want to beat Spurs because another loss is not going to get him the sack. So I think I think they're going to make their decision in the international break is what I think. And as I said before, I think they still think we can bounce back from this. And, you know, I think it's an interesting one for Spurs because if they beat us, they got to 18 points that they've got a, how many, you know, the four points clear of United. And we're meant to have top... I mean, look, I want to just go back for a moment. I want to go back to the start of the season. And what I said and what many people said is like, we need to be in a title race in April. We're not in a t title race in October. But I also said, top four's nailed on. You know who's going to get top four in May. It's going to be City, Liverpool, Man uh, Chelsea and United. Well, if we lose against Spurs, we're four points off Spurs... And other teams might win around us. You know, Leicester, Leicester, if they win, move past us. If Arsenal win, they move past us. There's other teams around us as well. So it's absolutely imperative that... I think that if we'd sacked Oli this week and we'd brought a decent manager in, maybe we beat Spurs, maybe we don't lose to City, maybe we go on an unbeaten run to Christmas and we sort of get back into a potential sort of five points off the top race, you know? If we lose against Spurs and we lose against City, we're going to be maybe five, six points off top four. And then it becomes a top four race. And I think that's why United's delay is inexcusable because to change it this week, there was still a chance to get back into a technically, you know, five points off the top at Christmas. You're still in a title race. I think if this goes badly and we don't pick up wins against Spurs and City, we could be in a race for top four. And, and that is how fine the margins are, to coin an Ollie point. I think there was an opportunity this week to try and still stay close to the top. I think if we lose our next two league games, we're, we're going to whack ourselves into a race for top four. Um, and that, and that's on the board, of course it is. Um, Oli can't sack himself. So I think it's going to be a very interesting game. And I think Spurs are just such an unknown quantity as are Manchester United. So if you predict any result, you, you're you not going to be far wrong. But I go back to what I said at the start and I really want to see what people are going to say in the comments about this and in the chat because... I don't know. And I can see some people are saying, well, you know, um, I want to see Donny start and I've seen that and Matic and I get that. But I, don't, I do. I, I've, I've wanted Donny and Matic to start as our midfield since the end of last season. But we've lost to Villa. We've lost to Leicester. We've lost to Liverpool. And I wanted them to play in those games and he refused to do it. Remember Donny van der Beek played well against West Ham in the Carabao Cup. He's not had a minute. He's not even come off the bench since then. And we've lost to Villa, to Leicester, drawn to Everton, lost to Liverpool. We've taken one point from 12 since Donny van der Beek played for Man United in that Carabao Cup game. And we've fluked a couple of Champions League results. We've been terrible since Donny van der Beek played that game against West Ham. And he's not been given a minute. So I'm meant to go when Donny starts against Spurs. Oh, well done, Ollie. You know, you've treated him like absolute crap. You've snubbed him. You've not even given him a minute off the bench. And now your job's in perilous danger and you're going to pick a player that you've treated like crap to try and win the fans over. Sorry, a massive part of me is like, I don't trust you. And I don't trust why you're doing that because you've made it very clear that you don't want to use him. And now your job's in jeopardy. You're using him. 
it's playing for the fans and that, and that's that's a weak manager who when their job is in danger they start picking a team to please the fans i want a manager that is confident in what they're doing and you know isn't swayed by what fans want and ollie's not been swayed by fans but he's not been very competent in what he's doing so i don't want him to pick a fans team i want him to pick the team that he's always picked and go down or turn it around in his way but I don't know. I, I, it's the great unknown. I don't know what team he's going to pick. And if he goes to a back five, I'll laugh. Because I'm like, <laughs> how can you not sack Oli and bring Conte in when he wants the job? And then Oli plays a back five, which is what Conte can do. It, it wouldn't make any sense at all. So it's going to be a really interesting team selection. It's going to be a very interesting press conference tomorrow lunchtime as well. But as I said, I don't think there's a way out for Oli here. I don't think there's a way out for Oli. Um, because if he sticks with the team that he likes, people don't like it. If he changes that team and goes to players that haven't been given a chance, people will be like, well, why didn't you give him a chance before? You're only doing it to please the fans. And if he changes formation completely, that's the biggest white flag in the world. I'm going to try and play like the manager that people want to replace me, and I'm going to throw all my plans in the bin, which is a basic admission that they were useless. So it's such a horrible situation. And when I when I put it into words like that, yeah, the sympathy starts coming through because I'm like, this is why he shouldn't be in the role because there's nothing he can do that's not going to get undermined. Like, the trust is gone and he's basically a, a rabbit in the headlights. To play devil's advocate, what if he beats Spurs, beats Atalanta, beats Man City, goes unbeaten till Christmas, gets us firmly back into the top four with that team? Well, look, would it surprise you? He did it last year after Istanbul. You know, we went on a really good run. It could happen. But what I would say about that is, it's not just about results anymore. It's about the style of play. And even last year when he went on that good run, there was a lot of fine margin games. There was a lot of games that were won by one goal. Even the Everton game after Istanbul, we're winning 2-1. Decore misses a really good chance. We go up the other end and I think Cavani makes it 3-1. Loads and loads of tight games with not great football. Moments, counter-attack. Is that going to be enough? Is another run of fixtures with fine margins and counter-attacking going to work? And also, last season we beat Southampton, we drew. Last season we beat Villa on fine margins, we lost at home, and we lost this year. I think teams have figured us out. I think the reason we're not getting those fine margin wins anymore is because teams know from last season what we're doing and aren't naive enough to just leave themselves in a situation where that can happen. So... I just don't think. I think the best case scenario for Ali is he picks that team, starts grinding out results till Christmas and stays unbeaten and stays in a job. But do you think when we're going to see an Ollie team that suddenly starts playing fast-flowing, attacking football and winning games 3-1, 4-1 like Liverpool do? I can't see it because the trust is gone. But, you know, we'll see. Ultimately, we all love football. Hopefully, most of us love Manchester United and all want Manchester United to win. And it's a game of football on Saturday. And that excites me because I always want the football. I'm intrigued. We need it after this week. We just need to see Manchester United play and we need to see Manchester United win. I don't think there is a result on Saturday that changes what happens on Sunday. I don't think we lose any goes. I don't think we draw any goes. And I don't think if he wins, it solves the problem because there's too many problems and there's too many trust issues to solve, which is why I just want to win and get to this international break and see what happens because there's many points as we've got going into that international break, the better. Um, and that is when the change should be happening regardless. And if I was in charge, I would be like, I don't really care what happens in the next three games. I want you to win them all and then I'm going to make the change. But I won't tell Ali that. But that I would be like, I'm making the change no matter what. But try and win all three games definitely anyway look thanks everyone for watching loads for you to get into the comments about what do you think about the team what do you think you should do how do you think the game will go i'm going to go with a draw um i think it's a very hard game to predict i think spurs can be as crap as they can be good i think the away support uh, will be fantastic for us but i think not having the old trafford crowd makes it harder for us to win but then it depends on how the spurs fans are um loads to consider Make sure you smash a like, subscribe, get involved in the chat and I'll speak to you soon.